In the previous video we did part preparation before strip starting and we got the part ready before that. Now we're going to do our strip layout. So we're setting the configurations of each of the stations. This is how we add idles. Add another idle there and an idle there and an idle there. And OK that. We'll give it a project name, your job number, if you will. That number will go on every part that goes into this die from here on forward. And we save. And we can rough the stations in. That was roughing the stations in. We can change stations later, add them, remove them, whatever. And we just created an assembly and arrange the parts in the assembly with two times material between the parts, one time material front and back. By default, we can change it, of course. And let's do, uh, first, before we do blank nesting, let's look, we've got 29.4% material loss, and let's automatically nest the parts. And as you can see, it changes very, very little. 28.8, not worth not worth rotating. Let's leave it at zero because that way our forms will be running parallel to the center line, or the back one anyway. And between the parts here, let's put an eighth of an inch. But what we really need is the progression to be exactly 1.8. That gives us 132 between the parts. And we can toggle here between these two numbers. We'll change that to 4375, which gives us 115 thousandths on the edges. And we apply that, and it updates the strip. We go to the Cut tab, and we go to Add a Punch. And sorry I'm going so fast. If I went slower, you'd see the tool tips fly out. But uh, obviously, there's only so much time available for videos. And I'm not going to fully dimension this. I'm just putting the dimension diameter down. Uh, in, in real life, you would uh, typically want to fully dimension that. You'd want to fully dimension it, I should say. And add another punch. We'll create a rectangle here. About like so. And then we'll do a search the punch outline in LogoPress. And the part preparation before strip starting is what gave us the sketch entities to convert from, if you will. Do a French stop style mismatch. That's a lot of work done automatically. and put some mismatches on down here. I like these. I don't use the loops so much personally. I like uh, the straight in between there. Gives you a little bit, little bit bigger of a target to design with. And one more. Automation is a wonderful thing. You've heard me say it before, haven't you? Dimension this. And I'm, I was going to say purposely dimensioning this uh, with some bad practice. There I just deleted that one, which is a good practice. But as far as dimensioning to these radiuses, I wouldn't normally do that because you may change that radius because the die is going to get developed. So in another video, I'll actually take this same model and redimension it, showing you the proper way to dimension. But again, for the sake of time, in addition to on our website, I'll have this video on YouTube for those that like to search and watch videos on YouTube. And they have to be under 10 minutes for YouTube. OK, that punch is done and fully defined. 
and there you can see how the mismatch interacts. We're looking at it graphically now. We haven't actually made the cut yet. Start another punch. And when we, when we hit that punch button, and I take this for granted sometime, but what we just did there was, as soon as we hit that button, we created the part file. We, we uh, automatically zoomed you normal to, put you into sketch mode, so you're ready to go. So it may not seem like much, but pressing that button is doing a lot of work. This one I'm not going to bother with any mismatches or radiuses, radii or anything like that. You just saw it on the other punch. And if you were doing strip layouts just for the sake of quoting, of course you wouldn't need to do all of that. Same here, I'll just draw a rectangle here. I won't give it uh, any dimensions to make sure it's interacting nicely with the mismatches. You'll understand that you need to do that, of course. And I will take that punch and hold down the Alt key and drag it wherever we want it. And now let's highlight this part and then say create all the punches for the insides of this cut. But the cylindrical one we'll do in station 4, which is over here. Now it's not going to do this punch down here, the horseshoe shape, because again that's at die level. So that sketch that got sliced through the part, if you will, didn't go through the horseshoe shape. So again, it doesn't get done automatically. So we do that the old-fashioned way. And again, mouse, I just converted the entities. A lot of mouse shortcuts and keyboard shortcuts. And now, obviously, this punch is at a different level. So, in fact, because we're only entering 60 thousandths, that punch isn't entering the die. So there we position nicely. And we're going to make this punch independent of the other ones. And I already know that this is 2 millimeters deep. So for the sake of time, I'm just adding 2 millimeters. Another great feature of SOLIDWORKS, we can add inches and millimeters. In a box and let's apply this so we'll go from being all graphically done to actually making the physical cuts in the solids again it's <clears throat> excuse me if you know SOLIDWORKS you can maybe imagine how much work is going on all the configurations that we're doing with the skeletons managing those really nice and that that red arrow there right in the center of the screen that's the uh, that's the center of force and look you can see the the cutting tonnage is all calculated right there and now we're going to add some heels or let's just do this one punch and again, there's lots more options here. We've only got so much time to give you a flavor for it. But uh, again, just a ton of and easy to use options. It's not like they're buried. We're going to add a shoulder to the T or a T-shaped shoulder to these two punches. We'll do this one and the one next to it. Yeah, the command manager up above there all those buttons on the top. Virtually everything in LogoPress is up there. And then, of course, when you hit one of them, the property manager comes up with the options. So very, very easy to use. Always has been. And here we can show or hide graphically the previous station, another nice feature. Again, here we can see how that tab is interacting. And there's our strip.